Hello everyone, welcome to my art time and I'm Taz. Today I'm painting my favorite painting of all time, which is The Starry Night by my favorite artist of all time, Vincent van Gogh. He was uh, the most recognized uh, post-impressionist uh, artist of, uh, of, that, of his time and uh, in the Western world for sure. For um, for me, the Starry Night painting, uh, it really uh, resembles a lot of things to me. I am uh, crazy, uh, I'm crazy about doodling and, I'm the, and the best kind of doodles that I do is the spiral lines that you see very visible in um, the Starry Night painting in the sky and it's also it also resembles how the, the well the cypress tree as you can see the tree stands like very far away from all like the village and the rest of the painting that resembles the artist himself who distanced himself from the society and the art world at that time uh, which did not really recognize his art at that time which made him very very gloomy and sad so for the sketch, I already did uh, the basic sketch that we're going to work by and I'm going to go on to the first layer of paint, which will be um, involving a lot of blues. Um, one thing very uh, clear and very visible about his most of his paintings is the color blue. He really loves using the color blue. so. Um, I'm going to use brushes for this art demo and I'm going to use uh, my favorite brush here and uh, the thin brush of, well, I don't know if that's visible enough, the Camlin uh, number 9 and another brush that's not really branded and there is also my number, not my number 8 brush. I have uh, one of those lovely Chinese brushes also, like the big thick uh, horsetail brush uh, as you can see. I like using these uh, square or rectangular uh, hair brushes are very uh, useful when you're doing uh, an impressionist style of, of Van Gogh, especially like the thin lines that you see very very much uh, clear and visible in his art. So. Without further ado, let's get to it. So I'm not going to have a thin layer of the of, of paint for the first layer. I'm going to make it very thick and I'm gonna leave it to dry overnight. And the reason why is because I already want the background, the the ba the phase of color before the thin strokes of white or lighter blue to be very thick and i'm not gonna go over it again so i'm not gonna make a first layer thin i'm gonna make the first layer very thick so um see it's very tricky with the first layer if it changes from one type of art to another if you're doing something like dot painting or short strokes of of, of brush uh, you're not going to have a thin layer in the background because it's going to be very hard to go over it again for this corner over here, I'm going to use a light shade of cerulean. The left side of the painting right here is going to be a um, cobalt blue. Very also a light shade of it. I added a little bit of white and a little bit of yellow to make it into uh, this shade. Not sure if it's showing very well, uh, but I'm going to show you how I got it done uh, it's very easy some of the foreground here and the background and some of the background uh, around in, in the village and the mountains it's all going to be an indigo blue it's going to be this color down here and i mixed it with a little bit of cobalt so indigo um so it's going to be purple if you don't have it you can mix purple with cobalt blue you highlight it with a little bit of white so Let's get to it. <laughs> I'm starting with the basics. Uh, the, the land over here in the mountains. 
make sure you make it a thick layer and do not brush the paint just sort of lay it down uh, with one stroke and make it very full had a huge accident the wax fell down on me that's up it's fine <laughs> now the third color is going to be the indigo and you can see how fresh and dark it is you can highlight it if you want but i prefer to give my painting a little bit of a darker uh shade Okay, so I know I wanted to keep it to the left, uh, upper uh, left side, but I also wanted to see where I have the dark shades here in the original painting, so that I can uh, make it into like part of the, the details of what will become the second layer. So I don't want to miss out on these little things because they they go a long way. So I'm going to have these done, um, very, very quick strokes of dark shades that I used on this side. I'm going to spread it on that side too, so I can make sure I have that effect. We're done. We're going to now leave it to dry overnight. The reason why I didn't do the cypress because, and the stars because they're going to have their own combination of colors. We don't want the blue to be their background. Hey, so yesterday I forgot to show you the colors and how to choose them, how to choose the right color because the wax just fell and like I totally forgot and started painting without showing you so I'll manage to have some videos done on how to mix colors and get the right color that you need okay so I'm gonna mix one color which is the first um, the first thing I'm doing on uh, layer number two which is the spirals I'm gonna work on the twirling uh, spirals here What I do here is I'm going to mix just a little bit of this white with my original yellow. Of course it's going to be very bright. So we want to dim it a little bit. So I'm, I'm adding just a little bit, a hint of ochre. Just to dim that yellow, it's too bright and yellow pineapple is kind of light but at the same time it's not that bright, it's not that shiny yellow. So that's how you know, that's how you kind of experiment. Look, I did not get it right yet so I'm gonna manage to get more ochre to dim it because I'm not very happy with it. So you just keep experimenting until you get the color that you saw on the... Um, well, I'm gonna call it color chart. All right, I'm done mixing. I will promise I will uh, dedicate an entire video just for mixing uh, each one of the group of um, color shades. So you're gonna have a full idea of how to mix each and every single shade of each and every single color, which will be separated um, um, by colors. To start with now, as I mentioned, is the spiral. And for the spiral, I'm using these three different brushes because I don't want the, my paint to mix 
So, um, and, and I chose them to be very, very thin, as you can see, and my three colors, as I showed you, uh, it, it's gonna be the pineapple yellow and sky blue and the porcelain uh, white. So let's get started. Make sure that the technique you're following is the short strokes and but like don't stress too much to try to get it right don't be very systematic as much as try and be more like impressionistic i'd like you to load your brush with a lot of paint because the second layer needs to be very very thick and once you strike, you have to have the brush touching slightly the canvas. Don't, um, don't press the brush against the canvas, just sort of let it lay the paint on the canvas. Now, when we are adding the third color in these little strokes, which is the white, I like to end everything with the white. Um, I would like it to be a little bit more of a careful um, stroke because we don't want to mix it with any of the other two colors that we already applied to our spirals. So make sure you add it in between, don't make a train of strokes, try to spread them. Make it a thick, as thick as you can. Load your brush with a lot of paint to make it a very thick stroke. And feel free to just go around the border, don't just stay in the, in the, border, in the border of the spiral or the wave over here. Try to go above and add a little bit of these strokes. We don't want it to be too tight into the shape because it's not a shape, it's just like a movement in the sky. So it's not it's not apart from the sky, it's in the sky. So we need to just let the strokes hang out of our borders, all right? Down here and up here. Now once we're done with the little short strokes that are separated, we need to mix them up a little bit. So we dip in from a little bit of linseed oil, dip the brush that we used to uh, with, the, with the blue color. So why the blue? Because this is our medium between the yellow and the white and we don't want to mix too much of the yellow because it's going to turn green. We're going to have it a little bit wet with white and a little bit of sky blue 
Now, after this, we're going to start mixing them up. It's like you're taking the tail of one stroke and you're mixing it up a little bit, attaching it to the, to the one that's next to it or behind it or in front of it. So you don't want to mix it too much. We want to still show that it's a short stroke, but try to a little bit mix it. Think of it as if you're cutting a salad and once you've cut up all the ingredients, it's time to a little bit mix them up, but they still do look like each one is like a piece on its own, but they're all mixed up together nicely and, and smoothly. So let's mix up our salad. So our next target is the moon. And for the moon, I have also uh, jotted down three uh, main colors that I'm using and I've decided they're going to be Now for the moon part we are going to use the as uh, we've seen in the original painting uh, two types of yellow and one white so I've prepared those paints for us and we have over here the cream white and this is going to be the uh, blonde sorry yes this is the blonde <laughs> yellow and this is the butterscotch yellow that i'm going to be using for the moon itself but the blonde yellow and the cream white are going to go around the shine and the glaze of that moon So I'm done with the moon and I also outlined a little bit of the mountains and the far background. Now what I want to move on to is the stars, which is kind of close to the colors of the moon, but I, I, I'm I going to use four colors because I, honestly I felt kind of confused trying to make my mind on choosing the right colors, so I, cho I chose pearl white. Uh, sky blue, tang uh, sorry, carrot, orange, and um, pineapple. So, um, this is my pineapple yellow from earlier here on the spiral, just to like refresh your memory where we've been. This is the um, no, we're not using this <laughs> pearl white, uh, right here. That's my pearl white. Um, again, pineapple yellow, and that's my sky blue right here. And we have the new mixed uh, carrot orange down here. You see I did a cu cute mess here, but it's fine. You can do as much mess as you like to get the color right. Uh, so, let's get to it. This is literally all I needed for the carrot orange. I really did not need all that. I just needed like a small dot dot in the middle of each star, but that's fine.
We return to the painting today. We are doing the cypress tree in the front for that for grounds, and we're going to have these three colors: the um, ink black over here, and then we have the mulberry purple in here, and the last one will be um, peacock blue, which looks really like green but it's it's closer to green than it, it is blue but it it's called peacock blue it is blue believe me when you when i start applying you'll see how blue it is <laughs> let's get down to work Now we're moving on to the mulberry purple and we're going to be careful this time because we are going to, this is going to be the second color so we don't want to mix it with the black and the black is the, um, per, the um, more dominant color here amongst all the colors that we've used so far so, or at all so we don't, we don't want to mix these two colors together If your color gets mixed up with a little bit of it, you are free to just wipe it and then keep filling your and loading your brush with as thickly as you can and, up, and apply it on the canvas very carefully. Next, we're using the peacock blue and we gotta be super careful. There are two colors that we're going to be painting through. So to continue the village right here, we're going to use five colors this time because it's like a big um, uh, middle ground here that we have to fill in with little details like little um, squares or rectangles or triangles and we're using these five colors we're using ink black um, cobalt blue Asian blue which refers to the Asian uh, sea or the Asian yeah it's like a different color blue than the other seas I guess that's why it's called Asian blue and the butterscotch yellow and um, the carrot orange over here. So uh, that's our butterscotch yellow. That's all. And now let's begin.
Now, after we've done the village and the middle ground and some parts here near to this uh, cypress tree, we have the last uh, stage, which is the white. We're just going to highlight the the village and some parts of the spiral that needed some white and a few of the stars. So let's get to it. So this is the end result of my starry night. I'm actually very proud of myself and it's my first attempt to actually paint it. Uh, and I would like to thank you for the 200 subscribers. I mean, it means the world to me. And you'll do good to continue your support by clicking like and subscribe if you haven't already done that. And thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.